Bring your own bib. BYOP. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like on either um, ONC or OAT social media, the chicken bucket's been posted too. So like, if you want to go and see the KFC bucket that we're all talking about, it's there. Oh, and you're going to see right it next dive anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Poragi sus suspense method right there, my Kumu would say. Yeah. You have to watch the next dive to be able to see the KFC bucket now. The chicken bucket. <coughs> I felt bad last night. During the intense moments, there was a good question that came in. I'm going to try and see if it's there still. It was like a person that just finished their final exam for something and then like pose the question what do what can I do to um, have a career like yours I'm there's looking. a lot of different careers on this yeah, ship there's like, I know. In the, even in this room there's I don't know seven yeah okay here it is hey y'all just finished my oceanography final yay have any advice on what sorts of classes to take moving forward if I'm interested in this field well, I mean, uh, if they're in oceanography, it sounds to me like they're leaning more towards the science. The back row. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, get on, like, the, the best thing to do before you, I don't know, maybe not so much classes, but get on a ship. Yeah. Do your best to get on a ship. There's, uh, what, seven different internship programs going on in the Nautilus every year, something like that. A lot. You can apply at nautiluslive.org. Yeah, Jacob, you gonna add in a, something there? Oh, I was gonna say very much the same thing. Um, if they're a, a U.S. resident, they should probably apply for the uh, Nautilus Live Ocean Science Internship. Mm, heard that, folks. Um, but there, there are other opportunities for young people to get on other ships as well. Um, so don't get discouraged if if you do apply, and there, there's only so many positions available. But try your best. Get yeah. On a ship. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Getting on a ship, like, you know, if you want a career in ocean science or any kind of ocean work, you know, you need to know what life is like on a ship. Um, and it's not for everyone, so, you know, get that out of the way if you haven't already had some decent time out on, yeah. uh, on the water. and That and um, the experience is, is invaluable. Yeah. Classes? Well... <laughs> I went to college for two weeks and dropped out, so I can't tell you. <laughs> yeah. Although I will say, you know, with college or university, some institutes actually own their own vessels too, and they might have opportunities to go out on those ships. So keep an eye out. All right, I'm going to head off comms for a bit. No more ONC people. Well, it's recovery, isn't it? They all run away. They get scared. Yeah. <laughs> ah, ah, run away! <laughs> How old do you have to be on the Nautilus? Positively ancient. Uh, in I, positively I ancient? I, I, I feel it, especially when I <laughs> look around and there's like 12 year olds sitting here. <laughs> Look, double that, and we're... <laughs> <laughs> yes, but Dave, you have the personality of a six-year-old, so it makes up for it. Well, yeah, there, there is that, yeah. Uh, uh, but I think it's 18? Yes, I believe it's 18 years old. Yeah, I would imagine. Apparently, they used to run a high school program. That's really cool. I don't know. You, yeah, maybe a few day trips out of Hawaii or somewhere they're close to, or like not even just day trips, but a few days. I, I can't imagine... I guess high schoolers come come out for a few weeks. I, I don't think there's an age limit to be on here. Like, you you got to be at least in high school. But right. then again, if you try and get into this program, they're gonna accept the students who are in college or like in post college. Yes, I believe. Degrees, well, to apply so. for a proper internship, I believe you must be 18. Um, mm -hmm. But. There are ships that have, like this one, that sometimes have programs for um, people in high school. 
Uh, it's not technically an internship. It might be a shorter sort of program than that would be, but. Uh, Let's say at least 18 for a short answer. And yeah. then there's no age limit. You can, you can. Correct. There is no age limit. And we know that because Ed McNichol is, I think we just, Randy and I decided he's two, 2,000 years old. <laughs> We saw him in some pictures from uh, 1527 when they didn't have cameras, <laughs> <laughs> but he had a phone somehow. Yeah. <laughs> that made me want to say out loud that I've had a flip phone before for some reason. I remember I had a I had a pink flip phone when I was younger. Oh, I remember um, I one of my first phones that I saved up for working at McDonald's for six dollars and fifty cents an hour. And the phone was four hundred dollars. It was amazing, and it's it was a slider one. That oh, open. yeah. And it could hold four songs. <laughs> I remember those times. What were your four songs? I can't. Like I remember the songs if they come on. Yep. I'll I'll be like, yep, that was one of the four. Yep. But I cannot remember the names of any of them. <laughs> <laughs> they were all like rock alt songs from back. I don't know. And then or. Uh, Early 2000s. Early 2000s, okay. Yeah. The next question is, did you buy the songs or did you Bluetooth send them from someone else's oh. phone to your phone? Uh, first of all, Bluetooth didn't exist back then. This second, all, of days all, of second of all, days of LimeWire. Second of all, that was back in the days of Napster and LimeWire. Yeah. And every time you download a song, you got about 18 viruses. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but of course, no one, no one here would ever illegally download files. Cause no, no, no. As we all know, that is highly illegal. Well, when I was, you know, 14. <laughs> Just trying to, trying to help you out there. Yeah, thanks. As a 14-year-old, I don't think you can get charged. Not anymore. Especially because it took about eight hours to download <laughs> one song. <laughs> yeah, I had to yell at my mom to get off the phone. I'm <laughs> not well, really showing my age here. I wonder if anyone's been able to spot our mooring this morning yet. Mooring morning? Yeah. It looks like it's starting to get bright out, so potentially. Okay, I want help figuring out, or right, I need uh, feedback on this thing that I did. Where is it? Stop laughing. You're not allowed to whistle. Actually, on a regular ship that I was on doing a job on, really small, tiny boat, barely fit this little tiny four class R O B system. I went on the bridge and I didn't like the main. <laughs> Yeah. Different reason though. <coughs> that one's for about weather, whistling up a storm. That's where that saying comes from. Like? On a steamship, it's about super superheated steam leaks, oh, and you get a whistle. It's a whistle inside. That's how. You, but you can't see it. Right. You only hear it. So you end up getting somebody walking around the engine room with a piece of two before stretched out in front of them, doing this waving it up and down, and when the end of the two before disappears, that's where your leak is. <laughs> Horrible side of the Chief Stoker throw a frickin' wheel spanner at me head. I'm sitting down there whistling away, repairing a mag magnetic loop comm system, and wheel spanner rattled off the bolt head by me Swede. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do that again. All the plugs dead. Why do I have such a hard time with power 
What do you guys think of this um, possible title for this photo album I made? Welcome to the Boney Buffet Fall. Like whale fall, but welcome, like welcome to <laughs> welcome to the Boney Buffet Fall. Boney Buffet Fall. <laughs> Jake's <That> reaction. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the original name that I thought of was a Boney Buffet. So I think that might be better. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to change it right now. Or welcome to the Boney Buffet works. Just take Don't the, the, take fall on, the fall on the end, pushes it too far. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go in and edit that right now. Or whale fall to the Boney Buffet. Nope, too much. <laughs> too much. Like, is this only for the whale fall? Yeah, th this oh. a photo album is featuring the, uh. the whale fall. Oh, I need to update the status that we are. Um, ascending. Okay, off-topic question, but do you guys know Robert Ballard? Oh, that, that came on from the site, by the way. I, I've met him. I wouldn't say I know him. Same. I've, I've met him on a handful of occasions, but again, I would not say I know him. Vehicles ascending at Cascadia Basin. I lost my pen again under the uh, computer racks. These ones right here? Did it fall into the abyss? Yeah, I'm gonna have to take the panel off after. <laughs> what? Rummage around. I feel like it just goes straight down to the ground right nope. here. Nope. 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 I think wrong. This would be fun to watch you try and dig it's, in. Uh, it's likely behind like several cables. Uh, Ooh, diving for cables through cables. Yeah. Something that we're all very familiar with now. You should put like uh you know you know those um those cushions they fit into like the uh the gutters and bowling alleys? You should put that there just for me. In this little rack area. <laughs> I was thinking that the next time I come here I wanna like bring stickers or some like a bunch of tape, or I could actually just borrow some tape or take ask for some tape to like decorate my um, my Ziploc that keeps my headset in it so that it's easier to identify when I'm coming up on watch. It's you're uh, you're having trouble finding it in the dark? Yeah. Just be like the rest of us and grab whatever one you find <laughs> and then put it back and no one knows the wiser. Oh. Dang, that's quite a plot twist there. 5.30 and the sun's all the way up-ish. Whoa, Lynette, where did you get that map? What, where did I get what? That map, research gate. Are you not seeing it? Oh. What, Wh <laughs> where did I get what? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I thought I was on high pack for a sec, but my um, my screen is showing like a map of uh, Endeavor with like all the events. That sure would have been useful uh, like five days ago. Oh, Funny, we were uh, just talking about that no like six idea. days ago, weren't we? Yeah. A good map of Endeavor would be quite handy. I Well, I honestly don't know what the heck I'm on now. <laughs> Uh, try to find that. Nope. 
<sighs> oh, guys, I had such a good sleep. <laughs> How many hours? Nine. Nine? Oh, that is a good sleep. Yeah. I went to, I went to bed later, about 10 to 7, I went to bed. I was, yeah, I was in bed and before that. Bam, mate, I went out and I didn't wake up till my alarm went off at 2. Whoa, that's good. I did wake yeah. up at 10, got up. Didn't even need to go for the old man's walk in the middle of the night. Yeah, I did. I, I don't I I don't know if there's ever been a night in the last ten years where I haven't had to. Whoa. So that's maybe once this cruise. Talk about showing your age. <laughs> Showing your age is when you say, like, say words that no one uses anymore. Like, uh, what's like a good please one? Please and thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kids these days, right? No manners. It's another glassy day out on the water today, boys and girls. That looks amazing out there. Perfect day for surfing and ROV operations. Horrible day for sailing. Oh, I think I see the buoy. The, it's bobbing about yeah. towards the... I saw it out there. It's on the port side. Yeah, I can see it in the screen that I have here, which looks, which looks like a fisheye lens that's above the hangar facing aft. Yeah, the 180 cam. That's a big jellyfish. Yeah. Can you guess the name? Nope. Well, you already said half of it. Jellyfish. Red jellyfish. Okay. Red round jellyfish. Uh, almost. <laughs> big red big jellyfish. Red, yeah. Big yeah. red jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. That's the name. Love that. <coughs> moorings and moorings on this beautiful morning. What is that? And it's gone. <sighs> hey. We've just been talking about how lazy you are, AJ. How lazy I am? Yeah. Just because I just go away? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally fair. If anyone wants to haul in a mooring later, feel free. Nope, I'll be having a nap. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. Yeah, what you, kind you, of? You stressed me out enough this trip. Yeah. yeah. Fair? Fair? Ooh, someone else has Some entered the room. Some dodgy situations. In what situation? Some Trevor. dodgy situations. Hey, There's nothing dodgy. Right. We're not doing anything dodgy here. <laughs> no, I know. Hi. Yeah. I'm having a break. Ow, ow, stop. What kind of pants are those, AJ? Yes, yes, you can. I have it right here for you. What kind of pants are those? These? Yeah. They're Fjall Ravens. Are they like electrical pants? <sighs> like, are my pants electric? Yeah. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> uh, I don't know. They're just like general purpose work pants. 
but they come with like a lifetime warranty, which is nice. I already ripped them once and they repaired them free of charge. And they are like cotton with like a wax coating that you can keep putting on. So it keeps them like kind of waterproof, but still like kind of breathable. Like they're not quite so heavy duty. No. Oh, it's, good so it's like actual waxed. Do you, yeah. do you put the wax on yourself? Uh, I should be putting the wax on myself. Oh. I have wax. I haven't done it yet because when they repaired them, they re-waxed them. But they're probably due for a waxing. Okay. It kind of reminds me of, um, you know, like those, I guess, eco wrappers that you can get in replacement of saran wrap or whatever. Yeah, those a lot at home, yeah. With like beeswax. Yeah. It's just cloth with beeswax or yeah. something like that. Someone's mic is on and it sounds like they just took off their headset. <laughs> what is that? Dave. It was Dave. It was Dave. Dave, Dave doesn't Dave. know the concept of muting, I guess. Knowing that I can turn it up. I feel like some, I was, I've been like looking at those pants because like I think there's a couple of you guys that wear those pants. Yeah, like, we all have these pants, yeah. They're so cool. What are they, OR? If you are Raven. Oh, okay. We had, there was a, a point in time where we had a professional a discount, and I think we all bought them at the same time because we bought them for like half price. Yeah. And I should have bought two because they're awesome pants, but they're also very expensive. Very cool. And then I, I was like, they look like the kind of pants that electrical people wear, like, you know, to keep the electric off of you. <laughs> electrician's pants? I'm not wearing electrician's pants like isolate them electrically. <laughs> like, unless they're wearing like a gumby rubber suit or something. Right, right. I'm not sure. But I think they're just work pants that you see electricians wearing. The seat moves into position, the temperature you want to see that. So whether it's venting or heat. Fury. All that kind of shit. It all just and you can someone turn off Mike's, uh, um, I mean Dave's mic, please? Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> How are you doing, Lynette? How am I doing? Yeah. I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm good. Good.
I have a question about the moorings. What are the spheres at the top of the moorings made of? <clears throat> yeah, so the spheres they're referring to, I think, are the buoys, which provide us with the flotation we need to keep the mooring vertical in the water column. And those are made of syntactic foam. It's, um, it's a pretty heavy-duty material that's made um, with the sole intention of providing buoyancy at extreme depths. So whereas a lot of buoys that get used for fishing floats or for, you know, for moorings that are going to go all the way to the surface, they could be kind of rubber with air inside them. If you tried to deploy one of those to the deep water, it would be crushed by the pressure and implode um, because the air can't, it can't resist the pressure of the water. So um, lots of materials uh, struggle providing buoyancy in deep water because of this requirement that they have to be very, very strong. So the material that gets commonly used is called syntactic foam, which is really just, it's kind of a combination of really dense foam and glass beads. So it kind of has the strength of glass um, kind of filled in with foam, and that's what gives it buoyancy. It's actually surprisingly heavy in air. So it doesn't, pound for pound, it's it's not nearly as efficient as using like a fishing float or anything that could be used on the surface, but it's sort of all, all you can really do for deep water buoyancy. Syntactic foam, is that how I said? Syn yeah, syntactic, yeah. Um, is also the same kind of material that's used for the yellow portion on the ROV Hercules, which also provides it bu buoyancy, which helps it to be neutrally buoyant in the water. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think that's the first time I've actually successfully said that word, syntactic, syntactic. foam. I mean, you say it's less uh, efficient, but that mooring still came up crazy fast. Yeah, but have you seen the size of those floats? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, they're huge. huge. They're huge. Yeah. You can go try to lift one of those by hand. I think in the past, like one of the floats that we've used to help float these moorings when they're at the surface was like approximately the same size as these buoys. So it provided the same flotation, but it was um, inflatable. Like it was a big rubber mm. float that you blew up with air. Mm -hmm. And it was so much easier. Like you could lift it easily by hand. Right. Yeah. It was like these, like you, you need a crane. These are like, I don't even know. I like can only imagine pounds. how heavy these things yeah, are. Yeah, they're very, very heavy in air. And do they provide, like, specifically, like, 2,500 pounds of uh, buoyancy or something like that? Or um, I'd have to look it up. I think they lose, what is it, like... I'm not sure. I think I'll get it wrong. And it depends on the depth yeah. rating of the syntactic foam as okay. to how much buoyancy it provides, because obviously... The deeper you go, the more glass you need and the less foam kind of thing. Like oh, okay. you need more strong of the stronger, heavier material and less of the lighter, buoyant material. Yeah. Um, and so the you can buy these floats with different depth ratings. Hmm. Um, but I think uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna. I don't know. I just feel like it. I've seen the 2,500 pound number floating around some of our documentation. But um, I'm not confident in that well, number. It, it completely depends on the size of the float. So like yeah. the straw moorings are going to have different um, different diameters and therefore different buoyancies. Yeah. Then, so let's see, off the website, if we're looking at a depth of 3,500 meters, which is what all of ours would be rated to, I think we use a 44-inch diameter float, mm. which has an uplift of 500 pounds. Oh, 500. Okay. Yeah. But oh. then... I don't know what that weighs in air, but a lot more than 500 pounds, I think. So it's less buoyant in water than it is heavy in air, which means that it has a density less than one less than half of water. Less than half. Yeah. Okay. Or yeah. greater than half of water, I should say. Okay. So huh. you could also look up like density of syntactic foam, and you'll get a range. Yeah. Here you go, depth and density chart. So at a, de at a depth of 3,000, you can get a syntactic foam with a density of four one, 416 kilograms per meter cubed. So that's kind of half of water. 
Hmm. Water being a thousand if it's fresh and something like 1025 if it's salty. So it gives you an idea. Yeah. So as a brain experiment, if for whatever reason you were ever trying to recover train weights at the bottom of the seafloor, could you ever do that with syntactic phone? Yeah, absolutely. You would just need more. Lots and lots and lots. You would just need lots and lots and lots. Yeah. Right? Once okay. it gets in the water, it helps you. Yeah. No matter what, you just need more of it. I see. So we kind of use a rough, I mean, I for the straw moorings and for some of our other moorings, that we break this rule intentionally. But one rough rule that gets used is that you make your buoyancy, so the amount of force, upward force that the buoys provide, you make that twice the weight of your mooring line and your instruments, and then you make your anchor twice the weight that your buoyant, that your buoys are buoyant. Okay. But so if you if you doubled your buoys, then they would be essentially the same as your anchor weight. And yeah. if you added even more than that, so you more than doubled your buoys, you'd float your whole mooring. I see. Which is what we do when we deploy the RC moorings. We float the whole mooring, and then we remove a float and oh. lower them. Okay. So this is one way of, that we get them off deck, is we go buoy first off the back deck, and that way we can sort of safely, by hand, pay out the mooring mm -hmm. into the ocean. But we, we put an extra float at the top, so that when we drop the train wheels off the back of the ship, the mooring doesn't just fall to the seafloor, because mm -hmm. we want it to be positioned accurately. Mm -hmm. So it'll fall, but the buoys will stay at the sea surface, so the ship can go pick up the buoys, we remove the top buoy, mm -hmm. we hook it up to our winch, and we lower them um, to the seafloor slowly so we can place it where we oh. want. Okay. So this idea of adding more buoyancy in order to float your train wheels is actually something we already do. If we were to bring that buoy down to the seafloor and hook it up to the mooring, then we could lift the whole mooring to the sea surface, but the only way to get it down is even greater weight. Yeah. So you play this game of like, now you need four train wheels to bring your buoy down to the seafloor to hook it up to your mooring just to lift two train wheels up to the surface. Oh. You've left I see. four down there. So. Yeah. It can yeah. You know. That was very informative for myself. Yeah. Thank you. It can get complicated this is fast. The, this is a game we play. This is mooring math. Lots lots of subtraction, lots of addition. Yeah. And then you guys practically have will have this planned out already, but then like you guys talk about it again kind of like in preparation for launching the mooring like this yeah. is what's happening da, 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 da. that's right like we come prepared with <coughs> our our moorings and our our anchors and our floats so that we can't really change that but what we can often change is the length between certain things to make it easier to get it safely off the deck and into the ocean so like if you had to depending on how how high your your crane can pick and how high your gunnel is it determines sort of whether you could put one buoy into the ocean at a time or whether you could put two into the ocean at a time. So you could sort of figure out where you need to do your load transfers based on, you know, the, the lengths between your moorings. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of stuff we would definitely talk about on deck with Mike, the deck boss, who knows the cranes and knows, you know, what he'd like to do safely on the back deck. And, and, and then also just talk about where we're going to put everything where we want it to be staged on the back of the back deck of the ship is extremely crowded with all of our gear. And so finding areas that we can safely work um, or creating space for us to all safely work and talking about where dangerous places to stand are, talk about what loads are going to, what lines are going to be loaded. Um, just making sure everyone's aware of the operation is a, a, a very important part of any deck operation is having that that planning stage and then also the safety chat that makes sure everybody knows what the plan is so that everybody can look out for their own safety. But Mike is incredible and he's made this trip extremely uh, safe and easy and successful. And so we're very grateful. Thank you, Mike. You're the best. <laughs> You're I'm sure he's asleep. I was going to say, you're probably yeah. catching some Z's right now. <laughs> but hope, if he rewinds and watches I us. I hope he's asleep. Thanks, Mike. I hope for his sake he's asleep. <laughs> for those uh, Mike supporters out there, we're so grateful for him. Big big Mike fan. Yeah. You know who I think is the biggest Mike fan? Doug. Oh, really? Yeah, I think, I think Doug's got a crush on Mike. <laughs> you know who's really enjoying this deck operation thing? Rye. Yeah, you yeah. think so? Yeah. 
She's really liking deck ops. She's always really liked deck yeah. ops, but yesterday she was <coughs> sleeping on a bench outside, and I feel like we've worked her too hard. I think she, well, <clears throat> I've seen that I've from my observations over the last however many days we've been out here. Um, the ONC crew enjoys deck ops. At least the deck ops people, they enjoy it. Yeah, like everyone but me. <laughs> um... I, I I think everyone likes tech ops. I like tech ops. Tech ops are a lot of fun. If you did them every day, I think it would be a different story. But it's such a it's an opportunity to work together, work with your hands, um, out in the sunshine. Hopefully, uh, tech ops can be a lot of fun. But I'll tell you, installing installing some of our observatories like in the dark, in the rain, on land, like on the shore. That stuff can be kind of less than fun. Yeah. yeah, you've been to North Coast, you know what? It yeah, can be like. I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it can be I, a little. I had to, tough. you know, I had to plate up those um, those wires on shore. I know what you're talking about. Plate up the wires. You yeah, know, like what, the, what with the um, the cable guards. Yes, the cable split guards. Plate. Yes, split split split, split pipe. pipe. Split pipe. Yeah. My God, split pipe's the worst. Yeah. At Kitimat, where it smells like yeah. human waste. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Our shore station for our Kitimat community observatory platform is like right at their waste treatment facility. It's a small community. And yeah. so whenever we're there doing shore work or like running our cable, it's always pretty nasty smelling. Yeah. It was low tide too. Oy. Yeah. It's a bad combo. <coughs> what we do for our, for the things we love for science, for science. Yes. yeah yeah
Oh, sorry. Slow the winch down is what you said. I did not hear that. Roger. Yeah, you're still uh, muted there, Dave. It's a bit hard to hear you. Yeah, I just want to have it pretty much in line before we get to 150. come over What's up Dave? When we come over the rail this time the bypass stairs yellow light on so you can see the yellow light until we're over the deck right? So you keep pressure Well uh, so we'll take it We'll put it into bypass when we're on when we're sucked into the crane. But does that not take pressure off? Well, it takes some off, not all of it. Yeah, but will the craft run without that on? Yes, but not as strong. I don't think we need it to be very strong, but I don't. It doesn't really Seven matter. Seventy meters of cable hanging in the water. It's for the. I mean, you can run it out of water. 
out of bypass for a full minute, it's not gonna, it's fine. Like these motors are no, no, so small. Yeah, yeah, my, that's high pressure on. Yes. Right? To my mind, that high pressure needs to stay on until we come over the deck. Right? That's debatable. Or, or not. Okay. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't um, really matter either way though. Might as well leave it on. It's not hurting anything. It only takes a second for them to get over the rail. Yeah, so this, yeah, exactly. Most so I'll turn it off when it gets over the rail. Okay. And then you can hit the switch. Roger. Because what I don't want is that just taken off over the side, right? It won't. The, the, the craft will still work, for sure. Okay. But it's weaker. And the jaw won't release? It will lo loosen, but it won't release. Every function still works. It's just okay. not as good. As long as you're happy, that's and fine. The, and, you the, and the things in, uh, in the Fletcher as well. Yeah. So, but I still agree, leave, leave it on high pressure until we get over the rail. It can run on high pressure for a good 30 seconds before you got to worry about it getting hot anyways. Yeah. I, when we leave our vehicle on high pressure until it hits the deck. And somebody has the cable in them. Yeah. But. Everybody does it a little differently. if you want in it. Hasn't got the ass to keep coming up and push ahead at the same time. Um, so, can I make a suggestion? Mm. So, never mind. You're doing what I thought we should do. Because we don't need to go ahead anymore because the ship's dragging us. So, just go full lateral to port. And I have. I've, I had full laterals on for ages. Still won't come up. Still not coming across enough, really. It will come up. Coming up's fine on full laterals, but it's not coming across enough. Yeah. It'll come. What do we got? Another 100 meters? It'll be good enough. No, it'll be close. But close doesn't get you a coconut. It's okay. I'll make sure everybody knows it's you, not me. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't bother me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I already got to hear about the being late today from everybody else, so... so. I'm not taking on another... <laughs> 
It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm going to dock my pay, Dave. Nah. <laughs> Trevor's going to take it off. It's kind of hard to dock it when it's only $3 a day. <laughs> I just wanted to make Rennie feel better. Yeah, he didn't need a push-up companion, I guess. <laughs> and there you're centering up there. Yeah, it's Lovely. coming in. Done. <clears throat> Current change in those la that last ah. maybe 150 meters or so. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Right, it's just gonna start coming up pretty quick now. Roger. Stick removed. Yep. Forget to bring that camera up, mate. Oh, yeah, we'll get it all sorted for you. Oh, you mean the Atalanta, Roger? Yeah. Yep. We'll do as soon as I turn the winch over. All right. Coming up to 75 meters. There it is. You're at 75. Going to dive south. Roger. Tilting camera up. Yep. That is zero degrees. Uh, you racked in all the way there, Dave. Nice. Yes, sir. Roger. Boxes are closed. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm ahead. I'm going to stop there. Roger. Guys, can I just ask you to keep the conversations down, please, for now? No Cheers. Thank you. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I'll turn that off. Yeah. Down, let's come down. Or So sensitive on the surface, man. Yeah, yeah, it's hot. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't know, people, I've I've heard um, deep water ROVs, some people really, I got it, yeah. some people really hate the hydraulic, and some people really hate the electric. I like the electric, but that's just me. I don't mind as long as it works. Right. right. What's the problem? You find that they <coughs> they malfunction often, the electric pan and tilts at depth? It depends on the Rawls ones. Um, we had to do some, get them to do, make some modifications because we had to hang it upside down so yeah, well it they, would stop working. They said that you're supposed to be able to no matter what because like, I've been talking they to them. They can now. It's be, they've changed oh, it and okay. updated it. Good. Because it would fall out of the yeah the gears. Gotcha. I guess they didn't reckon on anybody hanging it upside down. Yeah, they definitely, they definitely fixed it because they advertise now that you can put it both, and I asked them specifically. Yeah. To, um, Atalanta lights off. Roger. 38 meters. Roger.
Fifteen. Roger. Atalanta's got the ship in camera. Yep. Okay, lost tracking. Roger. Okay, it should be just about on the surface. Uh, got it uh, right between the A-frame. Lovely. Where's the comms from Michael? It is flat, man. Cool. Yeah. Okay, Atalanta uh, power nice. to instruments and cameras going off. Okay. Yeah, we're sinking quite quick as well, I think, if I come all the way off. down the touch. Pretty much gotta go full stick in this uh yeah. in this non swelly just to drag it at all. Yeah. Pull baby. <laughs> I think that's it, isn't it? Uh it doesn't look tight on that no, there. Not yet. Uh, Almost. <laughs> it's close enough. Yeah, we're sinking quite. Like you need to bridge keep verts up? Control. Yeah, I've got to keep some verts on. We're down at four meters again right now. Control bridge. Roger. Can we hold position here, please? Position. Let's start to move across. Coming around real easy, though. Nice. Yes, they do. Thank you for reminding us, though. What's that? Nothing. All good. They just, somebody in the back row making sure we remembered to tell the deck crew that we got a cable hanging down in front of the ROV. All good.
comes the daisy. There you go. You really got to stay quite tight when it's like I, this. I actually pull forward most of the time. I just put it on stick clock last time I was recovering in the flat, calm yeah. water, because, yeah. Roger. That's full stick forward. Yeah, I think he sees that. He's just just trying to communicate a little more, maybe. That's good. I'm trying to see if it's wrapped or not. Yeah. Caught on a float, maybe. All right, Dave, we got to eat up 10 minutes anyways. Yeah. Don't want to be too soon, you know? No. But interrupt me. Me fasting schedule. Got it there. We're going to drift back a touch because I got to come back to surface. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He's got it. Lynette, in the recovery plan, is the is it generally to stop the ship when you get to the service? Yeah, I think for the calm stuff, we should. Well, well I can tell Josh and Mike and stuff, but should change it to keep the ship going because the the swell and the rough helps you a lot it's, when it's lake calm it's tougher keep that thing tight who let Trevor up in the crane Having to use those those verts is basically killing everything I've got right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, that's why they are so yeah. adamant about no. trying to find that balance. You're good. He's pulling you. You can just yeah, yeah. He's got you. Just keep. I'm trying, just trying to keep that tension on the yeah cradle. The yeah, yeah. Another thing. Next time we'll we'll just keep the ship going forward. Or, you know, we could hook up 8,000 PSI to that crane winch so that it would move more than a meter a minute. Yeah, it does need speeding up some, like. Come on.
Hercules is 10 meters from the transom. Thank you. Roger, 10 meters. Should have, um, next time I think about that, should have let go of an Alvin weight. It doesn't, it's not quite as bad as. No, but you know, they don't like being heavy on yeah. the surface, which is totally fair. Yep. Right, he can pull me from there. Roger. Is that a fray in the rope? Okay. No stick lock on. We're good. Okay, I'm going to turn off thruster enable so they yeah. can't spin. And I'm Thank ready you. for bypass. Roger. See it? Ah. And uh, Hercules is out of the water. Roger. Watch that arm, I'm going to bypass. Yeah. Okay, it's still good. Okay, so you happy for me to kill high voltage? He's happy anytime, yeah. I'm yeah. happy, we're happy. Okay. High voltage is off. Deck control, high okay. voltage going is down. here. Deck copies, high